A medical breakthrough tonight, a procedure that appears to restore hearing in kids born with inherited deafness caused by a gene mutation. Through surgery, doctors in the U.S. and China placed a working copy of the damaged gene into the patient's inner ears. Children's Hospital of Philadelphia said it was a game changer for their 11-year-old patient. His hearing is improved from a, a state of complete and profound deafness with no sound at all to the level of mild to moderate hearing loss. Oh, that's so wonderful. The World Health Organization says roughly 34 million kids around the globe are deaf or have hearing loss, with genes responsible for up to 60% of those cases. With more, we are joined for our medical roundup by board-certified ER Dr. Michael Danio. Good to see you. Good evening. We want to remind our viewers that it was a week ago that you revealed that you have a hearing aid, something mm -hmm. that you've had since you were three years old. Mm -hmm. So this story has personal significance for you. How big is this? This is is a game changer. I mean, the, you talk about what happened at the University of uh, in Philadelphia there, but there was another study that just came out. There was with Massachusetts Eye and Ear in Boston, for which I used to be a patient actually, mm -hmm. working with the hospital in China. They had six kids, and what they did was they took an inactivated virus with the good copy of the working copy of the gene Otoferlin, which is responsible for transmitting sound from the ears to the brain, and they introduced that through the patients and ears, and they followed them for 26 weeks, and five out of six kids had their hearing restored. It's amazing. There is no FDA-approved treatment for deafness or hearing loss, mm. and so now I think the researchers are gonna present these findings at a big ENT conference uh, coming up in February, and then hopefully they can expand it to include more people, but as I said, total game changer. It will certainly, and this I think will help with the stigma, because people, mm -hmm. as you pointed out last week, you get your eyes checked, but you don't mm -hmm. get your hearing checked, and people just don't do it, and this might inspire. Right, and you know, the, the other big thing to remember is that these are kids that are born with congenital mm -hmm. deafness, and so if you don't have have that corrected by the time you're two or three, you, it makes it really difficult to develop language. Like that window kind of shuts in your brain. And so mm -hmm. introducing this very early on will be key. Okay. Well, I, I love to be able to present the good news there. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what you're seeing in the ER currently. A lot of RSV, a lot of flu mm -hmm. and COVID, of course, but more so flu, RSV? Right, so the CDC came out with a really good report this week just updating what was going on, and they specifically mentioned a couple things. One, that ER patients most likely presenting with flu than COVID, which is great. The second thing was that they acknowledged that JN1, which is about causing about 80% plus of the infections with COVID right now, does not cause severe illness. The current vaccine does work really well against it, so those are two really good things. It seems that the flu cases might be going on a downturn, but there's always that second wave of flu that we usually see in the spring, so we want to remind our viewers that it's still not too late to get that flu shot. You did a little poll on your Instagram, and I think 80% of uh, right. people, they do have their <laughs> flu shot. follow me, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think you. nationally it's about 47%, and then 80% of my followers yeah, have gotten the flu shot, so that was, that was really good that to see. That made you happy. Yeah, okay. definitely. Uh, and then lastly, this is interesting. So a lot of people think that they are allergic to penicillin. Maybe mm -hmm. you're one of them. It uh, turns out the majority of people who think that they are, they're not. Makes yeah. sense. Make this make sense. Vast majority. I mean, it's something like 30 million plus people think they have an allergy to penicillin and they sometimes go their whole lives where you go to the ER, they go to the hospital, that's not ever challenged. And it's actually only about 1% of those 30 million plus that actually have a true allergy to penicillin. So a lot of times people come to the ER and I prescribe a drug or about to give something intravenously, they say, oh, I have a penicillin allergy. It's really important that we ask them, okay, why do you think you've had an allergy? A lot of people say, well, when I was two, I had an allergic reaction. My mom always said to make sure I tell the doctors I have a penicillin allergy. Um, it's not usually the case. And so, you know, anaphylaxis where your throat tightens up, you can't breathe, you break out in hives everywhere. That's a true penicillin allergy, but not feeling like, it, like if it gave you a queasy feeling in your Nause stomach, that's, sometimes that gets labeled in the electronic medical record as a penicillin allergy. It's always there, it never gets challenged. And as you get older and you get sicker much easier with you know urinary tract infection pneumonia it's going to be difficult for doctors to find the right antibiotic for you it can be time limiting the options are suboptimal and there's also a big cost component for hospitals in the healthcare system if they have to find a penicillin um, alternative as well right because something like amoxicillin which falls under that umbrella mm -hmm. treats everything from sore throats as you were saying to just these right. common illnesses yeah it's a common okay. we use it a lot all the time okay well really good information tonight dr michael thank daniel you. thank you so much my pleasure alex